Everybody to the Four Tales podcast. I am your host, Kyron Silva. Along the way is my co-host, the plum producer of Ace Blade, Danny J. Quick. And this is the only place where you can find two award-winning blurred comic creators talking about comics. The only place in the world. Glad it's to true. have you here. Yeah, yeah. I would not lie, as some people say. I would not lie. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> um, when we talk about Venom later, we'll we'll see if you'll tell the truth or not. Okay. All right. All right. Wow. I I didn't realize how dark my screen is right now. I need to get a, a light or something here. Oh, you got a filter in there or something. Uh, I don't All know right. what's going on. I'm just going to use my phone. Okay, that looks creepy as hell. Never mind. If wow. you are uh, if you aren't joining us on our live stream, you can always go back to our YouTube channel and see the uh, how dark my room is right now. I don't know what's going on. It's just way too early. Again, for anybody that doesn't realize this, it's 7 o'clock my time. Danny's all nice and awake at 10 o'clock his time. Yes. But, you know, we are here for you. Um, it's been a minute. Last time we were here, we were talking with Greg. So I guess today we're going to have a special just Danny and I uh, and see how, what happens. Huh? Yeah, man. Let's just let's hang out and talk comics and stuff, man. What you been, what, have you, what have you been reading? What? Oh, we're going to start with that. Already. All right. What have I been reading? So. This week, I went back and read um, Weapon X, the original okay. miniseries from Barry Wintersmith. And I'm I'm not a huge Wolverine fan. I mean, honestly, I really what? hate I, I hate Wolverine. Wolverine and Superman, to me, are too overpowered for, to be an enjoyable comic. Wolverine is um, not overpowered, man. No. Yes. The healing yes. power, the healing, the healing factor is a cheat code. But mm -hmm. him and Su Superman literally creates his own powers at a moment's notice. Like, <laughs> and and depending on the writer, they'll create how much of a healing ability that Wolverine has too. I mean, think about it. Wolverine has yeah. come back from like a drop of blood and reformed his body. Very true. From one writer, but yet somehow pulling the bones out of his body from a different writer, he can't heal from that. I mean, come on. That, it's all about it, the writers, man. That's why you gotta have a. That's why you gotta have a consistency. I, but it's, I get you that. Know, it's, it's hard in comics. It's I hard. get that. I get that. And then you you count his healing factor. You count his hyper senses. You count his reflexes. You count his his fighting ability. His his intelligence, and then his unbreakable bones, and these three feet claws. I mean, that's too much of a. Also, depending on the writer. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess the clause would be depending on the artist who wants to draw it. But uh, yeah, yeah, he he is with Superman, my uh, least likable character. But the Weapon X series with Barry Wintersmith is an amazing book in itself. Uh, beautifully drawn and painted by him and written by him also. And the way that he uses the lettering to draw your face around the images on this, I don't know if you've ever read it, but he doesn't go like left to right, left to right, straight down. He'll do like star on the left side and then make like a J and have it come around the bottom of the panel and then go back up mm -hmm. to, fo to, to force you to look at the entire panel okay. instead of certain things. And it's just, it's really well done. Um, it really is a classic. And if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. So that's the first thing I read this week. Um, second thing I read is... Lumberjack 1 and 2 from this small little company called Fourth Wall Production. And it's a damn good book. Um, really? You enjoyed yeah. it? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I had, I've had i already had issue one, but I had it digitally. And I said this before on the show. I had issue one, and I read it. And I was like, all right, second issue came out. I got to see what happened, um, especially with the bombing and everything at the end of issue. Oops, sorry. Spoilers. Um, well, it's out. You know, how, you know how I am. It's out. Talk about it. <laughs> all right. 
So I had to see how you follow up with that, but then to have the preacher come in and, and do his thing, and, and I don't want to give out too much. I know you team spoiler, but to do his thing and to work with the the that guy to control people and turn them, that was an interesting mm-hmm. take on things, and it, it it made me get a little bit more intrigued to see where that goes. And then you got you got Lumberjack's uh, daughter. I, that's not too much of a spoiler, um, yeah. but to see what happens to her at the end, I'm like. Hmm. Wait Ooh. a minute. Ooh, wait What's a minute. going on here? <laughs> Why? What? What in the what in the what is happening with Lumberjack's daughter? So, um, hey, what's going on, Sean? Sean Barbour. Uh, Sean, how you of, doing? Of Instinct Comics. And if you didn't, nobody knows this now, so I'm going to spoil this. But uh, Sean and I are actually going to be working on a comic next year. Oh, uh, uh, and uh he gave me the script on it, and it's dope script. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's a little bit out, outside of my wheelhouse, uh, but I'm in. I'm excited to see what happens with that. But going back to Lumberjack, I liked it, man. I liked it. You and Morgan and all the rest of the team. You, you guys did good. You did Thank good. You. I'm, I'm glad to see work. all my my help <laughs> and yeah. my tips and my feedback. I hope. You, okay, okay. Let's where right, let's back up. All jokes aside. After I read it, I like to go back and look at all the details. Uh huh. And damn it, I was surprised to find my name in that book. <laughs> I was like, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute!" I told you I hired you earlier this year. I'm I understand that. From now on, <laughs> even though you haven't, even though you haven't done the job yet, because I haven't given you the tools to do the job. I ain't done nothing yet. And I was like, "I'm in this book." <laughs> getting the credit, you go. Yeah. Get the credit, though. We're gonna make like, that happen. I was like, all right. I mean, I'll take the credits. I'm in the book. And then I realized. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what happened. We uh, so you know, we just left short fuse. Yeah. Um. So the the deal with short fuse, like, it was really frustrating to not get lumberjacks put out the entire time we were with short fuse because that was the first project they were supposed to work on with us. Um. We had just finished Ace Blade number four, right? When we start, mm-hmm. when we joined short fuse, and they were supposed to take over production for all the comics and stuff like that. So we're like, all right, Lumberjacks 1 came out. Let's go ahead and get Lumberjacks number 2 done. We got the team, got all that stuff. But it just didn't happen, man. It was always There was always something either that was supposed to be in front of us or there was, you know, yeah. it just didn't happen. And it was so frustrating because I always, I didn't want to put, you know, I like to produce all my own stuff. So I like to run the run the teams. Um, put together the team for the comic. So Ace Blade was being worked on, but I was like, I don't want to, we don't want to put out another Ace Blade, you know, without, you know, a King Supreme book or a Lumberjacks book coming out because it's not fair. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem fair. Um, but, you know, there's different ways to produce a comic. Sometimes you, you know, you run the team, you find the artist and the, like you do, you find your, your, you know, your art team, your writers, your, all of that, and you put it together yourself, or you can go through another company. I know a lot of people, um, like the guests that we were supposed to have um, a couple weeks ago, they wow. have uh, they have you know situations where they put together teams for you, <laughs> and you know you just write the book. But yeah, you know with with, with short fuse it just didn't come together, and it was frustrating. But the, as soon as we, you know, as soon as you know the short fuse um, disbanded, yeah. it was the first thing that we wanted to do it was like let's get the pages that we do have. Um, we'll find somebody to um, get it colored and we, you know, we, we got it done and we, you know, did a Kickstarter. Thankfully we got funded and we want to make sure we got it out to people. So I'm glad people are getting the book because it's been almost three years since the first book came out. Wow. And, three years. Yeah. And I, and, and we hated that. So, yeah. um, but since we had to go do redesign, like we had to redo all the branding, I was like, let me just go ahead and, and <laughs> let me go ahead and, uh, have the template there so that you know when Kyron does actually start doing the job, it's already it's already there. So when I know, actually start doing some work for you guys, yeah, you know, whatever. Um All right. All right. So, well, no, I appreciate it. I I I looked at it and it brought a tear to my eye seeing my name in a book that I didn't actually do anything with. Because like I know I sent you that photo last night and mm-hmm. of all the books I've been associated with, which still boggles my mind. I've been in production of about 20 so books in seven years. Um, but when I saw that, I was like, damn, this is something. 
I can. That's, good, that's another man. feather in my cap, as they say. Three books a year is good for any self-published creator. Shoot, yeah. any you know any comic book creator. I think three books a year is, is good. So yeah. that's a good pace, man. I, I say keep it up, and um, you know, no matter what your part is in it, whether it's you know writing an anthology or or drawing the whole book yourself, or you know just being a financial director, I say, you know, keep doing okay. your thing, man. I, I'm proud of you. Well, I'm going to add Lumberjacks to my list now. So that's 23 books that yeah, that's right. I've been associated with now. That's right. <laughs> right. Take them credits. Hell yeah. All right. What about you? What books have you read this week? Oh, I was going back through a lot of um, like older books. So I got. We're, we're going to talk about the books you read, not the books that you haven't read that you just found randomly. I, I read them before and I went back to reread them. So, like, mm-hmm. Stronghold. Um, by Greg Anderson and Elise. I went back through this one because I remember it was a really good, you know, first issue. Some books, almost everything Greg does is really good. Damn it! Yeah, he does. He's very jealous. He don't miss. Um, especially, I mean, he's got stuff that I that I still want him to do. That like Marasa and the Gentleman, like those we're, two books. We're not supposed to talk about those out loud. That's like oh. Fight Club. Don't mention those. Okay. But I, I get you, especially uh, that okay. second one. I had the first issue yeah. of that second one. I was like, I want issue two. It's never yeah. going to happen, but I want issue two. And it's and it's terrible. And it's terrible. Yeah. Um, I got floppy copy, floppy cop. I've floppy heard of that. Copy. Yeah, I, I read the read first it, issue, heard that. and it's it's hilarious. It's a hilarious uh book. Okay. I got Justice. Uh, this is Justice Two, but I got Justice Three in the mail. Uh-huh. I think it was just three in the mail. That's from uh, Wingless, right? Yep, Wingless Comics. Okay. Now, these right. are all what you read this recently? Because that's a lot of books for yeah. you. Well, this week, uh, I had some time at work, I'll say. Uh, <laughs> and um, Apparently from your TikTok. No, you didn't. You got home early. So Yeah, I got off early. I got off early one day. We don't talk about We don't need to talk about it. Though. I don't want my <laughs> bosses to find my TikTok. <laughs> and I got these in the mail. But I haven't read oh. them yet. I did read the oh. first one. I read the first one digitally, but um, I got the Legacy of the View books from but, um, into uh, was that Into the View, right? Legacy, Legacy, oh, Legacy of the, the View book. by uh, Specs Thompson, former Spex. guest of ours. Yeah, yeah. And your uh, city mate, right? He's he's in the same city as you. No, nah, he's in Atlanta. Oh, he's he's over here with me. Who was it that that opened the store? In that was sense. that was one of those people from the West Coast that haven't been on the show yet. Oh, okay, never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, we don't talk about I that. My, I got my guests mixed up again. <laughs> so if anybody doesn't know, if uh, at this point, if you, if we've had a show where we had to cancel it, it's because of somebody from the West Coast. Just letting you know right now. <laughs> Outside of Dan Bethel, everybody else we've scheduled that's on the West Coast has flaked on us. So. Dan the man, Dan King. He's come through a couple of times. He was a guest host with us too, so he's come through a couple and of I, times. And I tell people, you know, if you come, if you come on our show, that's almost guaranteed at least one sale that you will get. Because point, I'm yeah. probably going to buy your book if you come on the show and you tell us about it, and it sounds interesting. I'm probably going to buy it. So that's the motivation. Man is right not there. lying. You'll be surprised before the show how many times he'd be like, "I had to buy the book." And I'm like, why? Because I, I previewed it and it was too good. I had to yeah. buy it. I'm like, all right, man. I like you support to, them. I like to have at least read stuff that we, I mean, if people are going to be on the show and we're going to talk about their comics, I want to at least have some kind of some kind of knowledge of what it is. Fair or enough. If they, uh, if they come on the show, it's because the show is so early. Hey, man, <clears throat> we know, Chuck. We know. I'm trying to trying to do better. I'm thinking... We might be able to push it back a little bit, but man, all right. So Chuck said that's because the show is so damn early and West Coasters like sleep in. Yes, you are right, Chuck. I'm a West Coaster and I would love to sleep in. But Danny is too popular, too busy, and his wife needs help. So yeah. I can't I can't we can't do anything about this. This is the only real time that we can do this. Unless Saturday Danny's morning. willing to be up at like midnight doing mm-hmm. this. And see that's definitely not happening. <laughs> I got a text. I got a text from you from at like three a.m. my time, and I was like, "What is? Why is Tyron sending me messages?" I because I was okay. I got I got in late. I got in late last night because uh, we were celebrating my wife's aunt's birthday, and we were at their house late. And I I was still wired, man. I was still up, and I was like, "I'm just going to start texting folks." 
F you if you are awake or not. I'm gonna start texting folks. And then I started thinking about well, how many books I was I've been a part of, and that's why I started going back and counting. It was just one of those things. So <laughs> Hey, it happens, man. I was I was nice and sleep, but I had to get up early this morning. Because remember, I told you we had to take our dogs to get spayed this morning. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, uh, you know, had to be up early for that. Yeah. So I got up at I got up at seven a.m. my time too. So don't feel bad. <laughs> how are your dogs, by the way? I've been mean to ask you how they they're doing. Uh, they're um they're still there. They're going to be there until sometime this afternoon. So hopefully everything goes goes well with them, and they'll okay. be home tonight. Nice, man. Congrats. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to the meat of the show. Because you said you wanted to talk about Venom. So let's talk about Venom. What is it you want to talk about? about this? So I didn't, I didn't hear you say if you saw it or not. Did you see it? I haven't seen the movie yet. No, not the second okay. part. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. And okay. I'm actually debating whether I'm actually going to go see it. Because I don't have any interest. First of all, I knew... <laughs> I know I get a good feel about whether a show a movie is gonna be good or bad by you know how much advertising they do, right? So okay. I hadn't seen any advertising for the movie at all. Like I hadn't seen any until this last week, until like the week of the movie coming out. I hadn't seen anything. Have you and been watching the, TV? Yeah, I'll be I'll be I'll be watching Netflix. I'm everywhere. I'm Netflix is not TV. TV. They don't show commercials on I mean, TV. Not Netflix. Hulu. Hulu. <laughs> they show uh, commercials on Hulu. Um, I get ads on TikTok. Anywhere it's social media, I'll be on there. Mm-hmm. And I haven't seen any ads or anything like that. So either the algorithms don't work and they don't know that I like comics mm-hmm. or, you know, they just don't, you know, they didn't think that a movie was going to be good. So I All right. think it was pretty good. All right. Well, I might have to agree with you because a lot of the uh, early reviews I've heard is that it's not that good. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. I'm okay with that if it's not that good because the first episode re- wasn't really that great. I, I mean, it was, like it. it was fun. It wasn't, it wasn't compelling. It wasn't really something I, I really wanted to you know, talk a lot about, but um, it was all right. It was good enough for a Venom movie. It was good enough. It was, I do it was good see enough. It as a carnage. Yeah, that's my thing, though. If they messed up Venom, I'm sure they're going to mess up Carnage. Because my the version of Venom that I like is the cartoon Venom, the menacing, you know, um, jealous Eddie mm-hmm. Brock. You know, I like that version of Venom, the bad guy Venom. They, they're trying to make Venom into, you know, an anti-hero, a, you know, fun guy, which is, you know, in the comic books, Venom was quirky like that. Venom yeah, is, yeah. you know, less less evil, more okay. Two personalities fighting over one body, and let's go out here and and try to help. However, we in our own way, right? Um, mm-hmm. But you know, later, like Spider Man versus Venom, later oh. on in the Spider Man stories, he became more like you know, I'm the alpha. I'm alpha male uh venom and we are you know what I'm saying like I, I yeah. prefer that venom to the to the good guy venom they're trying to do and for Carnage to be or for them to have a movie with Carnage that's rated PG thirteen I'm like it's not gonna be it's not gonna be what it could be. Okay but if you're talking about the cartoon car- uh Venom there was even a section of that cartoon where they had Carnage and they did a de- decent go- job and that was G rated. So why can't they have a PG thirteen version of Carnage and have it still be good? I mean, I understand you you have to have it where he kills people, but you can still there are cinematic ways to show them killing without going gory and you shaking your head no, like I'm an idiot. What what? No, in no. my the, in my young mind, in my young brain, when I'm watching Carnage, he brings out the hundred sharp objects, and they showed that in the preview. They did show that in the preview that yeah. he had his tendrils and threw it at Venom. Um, but he, uh, <laughs> but as a more mature film is supposed to be the more you know evolved form of entertainment, right? So if you're gonna show it, then why not just why not go full why not go full regalia? We know that we know that people can enjoy R-rated movies, mm-hmm. so it's like why not just give them. 
why not just do it how you're supposed to do it? I don't get that. <sighs> marketing. It's all marketing. And you and if they can do it for an R-rated movie, then they don't get as many viewers because you can't bring in teenagers and, and kids that are going to want to watch it. So they yep. don't get as much money. All I mean, most people who love horror movies, you understand you're not going to see a bunch of kids in there, which means that's less money in the pockets of these theaters. That's all it is. That's all it is, man. And then you can't market the toys and the branding to the kids because they haven't seen the movie. So you can't have this gruesome Venom movie and, and still make the money back that you put into it. Uh-oh. Did we lose Danny's voice? You know, you know how I am about money. So, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. that's how it is. Did you know that you can control your iMac from your phone? Did no, because I don't have an Apple device. <laughs> Oh, I wow. know what it is. Hold on. I got my my daughter's got my keyboard upstairs. Let, that's what it is. It's messing up. I'll be right back. Give me one second. All right. All right. So apologize for this. Danny is going to beat the hell out of his daughter, apparently. Um, I'm here by myself, so let's talk to me. How's everybody doing, by the way? Uh, let's see if we have any questions. So Chuck and Sean were in the chat and they left, I'm assuming. Um, but Let's go back to this Venom situation. And like I was mentioning, you can't have an R-rated movie with Venom and have it be worthwhile for these theaters and for these movie production companies because they've invested too much money in, into it for them to put some R-rated movie out that's not going to make their money back. That's all it is. Um, if there was a way for them that they knew that they can get their money back in an R-rated version, they would do it. Plus, I got to think that it's a Marvel thing, too. Marvel's probably got something saying, hey, I know you guys have the licensing for this, but we still want to keep our our movies in a certain range. And still, that way, you can still have that Marvel branding on that. I, I just got to feel like Marvel has something in their pocket that says, you're okay to do this movie, but it still has to be a certain way. It still has to be produced a certain way for it to be a Marvel cinematic movie. Because everything right now is going to be associated to just making everything cohesive with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You're going to see too many other upcoming issues, upcoming series be directed towards a global or unificated MCU. And I, I just don't see them doing R-rated stuff too much. I know there's been talks that they're going to make some R-rated movies and TV shows in the future. But that's going to be very, very few. And especially with Venom being associated with Spider-Man, I just don't see it happening too much. So we'll see. Hey, Danny's back. Did you beat your yes, kid? We'll see. I got my. She had my my wireless <laughs> thing upstairs in a whole other part of the house, and I was like, "Is my phone control?" Like, because I was pressing mute on the phone, and it was controlling this. I'm like, "Bro, this is not right." <laughs> See, this is why I don't buy Apple. Everything's too connected. It's good though. Usually, nine times, ninety-nine times out of a hundred, it's it's good for you. Mm -mm. No, it's all right. All right. So, you okay then? As far as so, are you going to see Venom? Uh, like, eventually, you're going to go and see Venom too. My son wants to. Um, my son wants to see it, and um, but he's still excited about um, Shang Chi. Have you guys um, seen it? Yeah, he we went uh opening week to see that. Okay. And he's still he's still like he's in here making the ten rings nice. out of cardboard and doing martial arts and stuff like that. So I hope I don't take him and he's like, Man, cartoon movie, uh comic book movies suck. But we'll I doubt see. he'll say that. I mean I'm pretty sure he's seen all the other Marvel movies and he probably enjoys those. So he's not gonna yeah. say that. All right, question if you've seen Shang Chi, have you been following the what if series? Yes, yes. I finally got caught up this week. All and right, so um are you are you caught up? Yeah, I'm caught up. That I'm caught up. But all right, the reason I'm asking that is if you caught up and you saw Shang Chi, the episode with Doctor Strange where he becomes all demonic Doctor Strange. At the end of that episode when he turned into this demon creature with wings and things like that, did not did that not look like 
the monster at the end of Shang Chi? Uh, yeah, it did kind of. And did it not look like the barrier in Shang Chi that was holding it back was sort of crystallized, like the crystal thing? Yep, just like I the can one. I kind of see that. So, is there a possibility that that was actually Doctor Strange? Um, I don't think that um, Shang Chi would have been able to kill it, kill it if it was Doctor Strange. <laughs> But it was uh, a different dimension, ten, Doctor Strange, though. I know the, the the ten rings are powerful, but I don't I don't think he stands a chance with the Sorcerer Supreme, especially not like that. That's a okay. that dude seems powerful, but I do like the. Um, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, but I'm I'm excited for this last episode for sure. Oh, of what if? Yeah. Yeah, that was nice. That was a nice episode. Uh, Greg, what's going on? He said, I got to see Venom 2 and still Shang-Chi and Black Widow. Damn, you haven't seen anything. <laughs> he's working. I, heard... I think he's, isn't he on uh, Kickstarter right now? He, he have... is. Greg, if you're still in the chat, feel free to drop your Kickstarter. I think it just launched like yesterday or Thursday, actually. Uh, but yeah. he said the after credit scene in Venom is awesome for some reason. Okay. Well, I'm when... sure... Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure they they made the whole movie just for the after credit scene. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that because from what it what it seems like is the first one did well financially. Sure, they made all their money back plus some. So they're mm-hmm. like, hey, let's make another one and let's try to you know expand on this thing. And I think they just rushed through this one. They were like, Car- we got Carnage. If we're doing Venom, we got to do Carnage. And, you know, they still have sharing rights with uh, Marvel for Spider-Man. So I'm sure it's going to be something that connects something to something. Hmm. I mean, I, I still am waiting for that big surprise where we have a definitive Marvel Cinematic Universe movie connection with Venom or something else. Right now, it's it's still, still all up in a, as a guess, I guess you can say, but... I, I, I'm excited to see this. You know, here, I want to show you something, though, that I caught on Twitter. And you're familiar with Second Sight, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if nobody doesn't know, Second Sight Publishing is a self-publishing company. Uh, they just got into Diamond, into previews, things like that. And um, one of their publishers, I guess you can say, uh, Marcus Roberts, they posted a video of them at the movie at Venom yesterday. And this, this is why I brought it up. But check this out here. Let me see if I can share it. I'm going to expand this here. All right. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Look at her. That's so cool. Alright, so for anybody that's not watching the live stream uh, let me cut that what that was is Second Sight bought some type of advertising mm-hmm. at the preview of, of Venom and showed it for you know the theater audience to see so I was going to, the reason I brought that up is A, that was really pretty dope to actually see that but B, is that good marketing? Like is that something that you may could consider as a comic creator to Okay, I'm already. Um, our local theaters allow uh, also allow um, pre screen um, advertisement. So we've been talking about doing something similar, but it would be more uh, for me to do it um, at the prices that they need to do it. It would have to be to push for like a specific thing. Like I would have to be selling. I have to push them to sell to buy something right then and right there, or to have them see something right then and right there. Um, not just to advertise our our company, but it, I think it's a great idea, especially for you know to to put it before a movie like Venom, because um, yeah. that's that's shared. Uh, that's those are hot leads right there. So um, I think it's very smart to do. But for for us to do it where we are, we would have to we would have to you know have a product out or a Kickstarter going or something like that that people could take it take advantage of. All right. So since you brought this up. Are you willing to divulge how much the theater is asking for? Hundreds of dollars. Like mm. it's 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 basically based on, you know, the amount of time and the feature that, you know, 
that people are put. Yeah, exactly what Sean is saying. Okay. Um, what so people uh, are, pretty much it's not a live stream. Sean said, put a QR code on the ad. People can use their cell phones on the spot. They already have them out, which you should not have your phone out during the theater. Put your phones away after you put scan the QR away. code. <laughs> we have already. I wish I had one of my comments here because I would show it to you. Um, but we have the QR codes on the back of our books already, like to send people to our uh, websites. Um, all of our stuff, you know, from my own, I have that kind of stuff. But basically, the prices are, you know, depending on if you want 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, and then, you know, which which features you want to, you know, have it go before the prices go up, mm. depending on which the you know, because most people are paying thousands of dollars to for their ads to run <laughs> um, yeah. before these popular movies. Like if you put your ad on before Avengers Endgame, it's going to cost more than, you know, yeah, the Avengers theater. too. But yeah. and I think I think it's just a, a good opportunity that that probably a lot of people aren't considering. I mean, and especially like you said, because it's a comic movie, you already have a group of people there that are just for comics in in some manner. Mm -hmm. Show them where your comics can go, because obviously Marvel isn't doing that. So why not take that opportunity? So that's a good thing. Yeah. All right. Man. Another thing that I was gonna say, you know, I'm always on TikTok. Um, I always. think that <laughs> I think people should start telling stories. So one of the things that we're gonna do with our other podcast, the Super Shorts podcast is you know tell stories on tiktok so we're going to tell little short stories that we you know have put um on the other podcast in as tiktoks we're going to make them as tiktoks um do little little drawings of of art um i was thinking about using the commission that you that you did um for one but i would have to have to think about it because i don't own blank man so um <laughs> i don't know if it would be i don't know if it would be worth it but I think it might be good to, because it's a character that people are, you know, more familiar with. So I think it's, uh, I think it might be a good idea. Okay. All right, man. Well, I'll look forward to that. Um, Cause you know, I, I like your TikToks. I like it when your family's on there more than you though. But yeah, me you too. Know. Yeah. You know, I have to force them. I have to force them to, to interact with me. Dude, so. they're, they're getting to become teenagers. They don't want to hang out with you. Yeah, they don't, they don't want to at all, but. Now that I'm paying them, I, I just decided um, my two <laughs> my two oldest daughters, they're both artists. My my two oldest daughters, okay. um, they don't like to share that stuff online, but they're going to help me with a project. Um, so now that yeah, I'm paying them, they have to. I'm still waiting on that part two for that TikTok. I followed you made me follow your daughter's TikTok so she can get a part two of that uh, Demon Slayer. I, I told her several several times. They just don't like they, you know, teenagers, bro. You got them. You know how I go. I got one. You're right. I got one. You know, you know how it goes. I, 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 under, I feel you, man. I feel you. All right. Well, this is probably our best opportunity to switch gears and do some quick takes. Um, if you are unfamiliar with the Four Tales podcast, uh, quick takes are usually just Danny, where he takes five questions to ask to our guests. And they have 45 seconds to answer those. As you can tell, we have no guests today. So Danny decided that he's going to give me some quick takes. And we'll see how that goes. And see if I can actually answer them in 45 seconds. Maybe. Um, Looks like Danny so, froze. Am I, oh, okay. Yeah, my, I was, you got me now? Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, there you go. You're on bad internet connection. Dude. Okay. What's up? No, man. My, All right, go ahead. My internet is great. It's just... Darn computer. All right. So, as you know, I've shared with you, uh, <laughs> there's another <laughs> podcast that I do, the third one with Morgan, uh, Top Five Live, right? Yes. So, I'm going to ask you, I have two questions for you, but the other three <laughs> questions are going to be top fives off the top of your head. Okay. Damn. And you have to give them to me without even thinking. So you got 45 seconds to give me your answer to these top fives. Okay? okay. Okay. First of all, top five comic book properties of all time. 
See, I'm gonna take time because I control the I control the time. No, you gotta hit the button. You got five. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, top five combo properties: Batman, Superman, Spider Man, X Men. Uh, I want to say Avengers, just because of no Fantastic Four. I'll get Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four is a good answer, I guess. It is. It is. It's only because relevant. only because it launched everything else for Marvel. So I got to give it up. Without Fantastic Four, we wouldn't have anything else. I think Fantastic Four had a great run. I'm excited to see what Marvel does with them, but I don't know if they can revive that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to to revive its glory from, you know, the 60s and 50s. It's It's a... It's going to be tough. I think the times are different. We're not looking for that type of story anymore. Um, and I think it's just not something that compels people. There, There's that family dynamic that Fantastic Four was the bread and butter of. And I don't mm-hmm. think people want that type of family anymore, honestly. In com- yeah, in, in com- yeah. I don't know. This, it's going to be tough. I think that they can do it. And I'm hoping that I would rather see X-Men. I think X-Men could really do that, that family dynamic with with drama very well mm-hmm. i think that they could throw drama into you know a larger family with with superpowers um but fantastic four i don't know it's gonna be tough the last the last three movies three four movies that they've done have not been <laughs> have not been received well i enjoyed them <laughs> but you know uh, we don't try to talk about the movies outside of silver surfer which is the best comic book character out there there wasn't really much about fantastic four the movies yeah. at least yeah all, all right. right so your next question all right these are tough you, have, <laughs> you said that you were talking earlier about uh about the the 20 the 21 20 now 23 comics that you've uh had a part in producing <laughs> um i have a question for you okay if you could only if you can guarantee is that olivia that's olivia, this right? is olivia if it if, um if anybody's listening to our our podcast olivia is now on the screen with danny uh, she's being adorable. Hi, Olivia. <laughs> um, but go ahead, finish your finish your uh, question there. Yeah, now she want to be all shot. Okay, so if, if you got to keep only one of your comic properties, and all the rest of them had to go away, but you can guarantee that this comic is going to run for at least a hundred issues, which one would you keep and why? <sighs> Damn it. Um. All right, and and uh, people are gonna be surprised, but it's my my book that hasn't come out yet called Starcore. Um, really? This is yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I can guarantee it's gonna run a hundred issues, this is my favorite character out of everything I've created ever, because it's an homage to one of my favorite characters, Darkhawk, and it it's that space adventure type of thing that. I, that's my wheelhouse. That's why I'd really love. I know people thought Saw or, or Shaman's Destiny, but if I could keep one book for a hundred issues, it's going to be Starcore. And hopefully, you guys check it out because Marcos Martinez, who's drawing it, is killing it, and it's different. Now I'm excited about Star. Now I'm excited about Starcore. See, I, I've seen some some behind the scenes stuff, but you know, so apparently you hate Saw and you hate Shaman's <laughs> Destiny. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I know now. I was investing <laughs> a lot of energy into uh, Saw, so now I know I can just you know throw that to the side, and I don't even have to read it anymore. Hey, go ahead, right. throw it away. <laughs> throw it away. <laughs> throw it away. Throw it away. Okay. Um. Question number three. All right. This is the age-old debate in comics: what is more important, the artist or the writer, and why? As the person who is both artist and writer, you're you're you should be a subject matter expert on this. This is actually an easy question. If we're talking about comics, it's the art. Because if without the art, it's just a book. It's no longer a comic. So if you don't have good art on your comic book, it's it makes no sense. So it's the art. Don't shake your head. This is my answer. You're wrong, though. <laughs> But you're wrong. I am not wrong on this. It's the art. It's not. The answer is both. You can't have no, a. No. You cannot have a, a a comic book without without the words. If you just got a picture book, 
this is just a book with pictures okay that's yeah. a different thing but that's not a comic book you gotta no, have I, I have read i have viewed a comic that had yeah you no didn't dialogue. read it you didn't, <laughs> didn't definitely didn't read okay, it wait. it had no dialogue but it had a story so you can okay. have a story without dialogue and that still shows what happens in a scene things like that you can still sure, have a story but, with no dialogue okay but doesn't somebody have to write the story doesn't somebody have to write that story depends on if we're doing the marvel method or not you can have a general f- idea of what it is and the artist can just take it from there and say this is point a this is point b get us there if art you say so. if you art. say so <laughs> if you say so good morning okay. marvin thanks for joining <laughs> Right now, we are in the middle of Danny's quick takes, and he's mad at my answers. But I'm a, I'm gonna stick with my guns on this. Okay, I understand you don't you don't care about the story. You don't care about writers. That's cool. Um, so top All five matters. Damn it! <laughs> now we're really gonna find out what you care about because I want to know your top five indie properties right now off the top of your head. <clears throat> Let's go. All right, uh, Long John Web Comic. Uh, it's not on the Wear Spider. Okay. Um, Drexler from oh, uh, Nathan good. Kelly. That's a good one. Um, Above the Clouds is a beautifully drawn book um, by local artists. And oh, I can't. There's so many good ones, damn it. Um, I still got 20 seconds unless I pause it myself. Don't do that. Okay. Um, I, I, I can't pinpoint just one more, damn it. Um, yeah. If, if you got you got to be one more. That's why it's the top five. five I know four. Uh, I, I can't think of a, a fifth one. There's there's too many damn good art. There's too many books out there, man. I'm sorry. I can't pick just one. There's, I mean, I can't pick that fifth one. Terrible, uh, terrible, <laughs> just terrible. Is that really terrible on me, or is it terrible on the fact that there's too many good? Books out there that I can't just pick a, a fifth one. Mm, nah, it's a cop out. That's yeah, a cop you're right. Out. I know what you did. I know what you did there. I know what you did there, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. All right. So, last but not least, of course, I'm going to ask you your top five comic book movies of all time. So, let's hear them. I want to know five to one though. What's your worst? What's your number five? And what's your number one? Um. Uh, all right. So my number five comic book movie, Wonder Woman, be f- number five. Four would probably be <sighs> Spider Man: No Way Home. Um, three, Black Panther. Two, Infinity War, and one is Endgame. Oh man, no, that's yes. not right. Yes, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you are okay up until like the top two. What happened? <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> What what happened? <laughs> what happened to your top two? That's not right. What, what? you were you really like in game that much? Yes. Uh yes. There because you gotta think of it as a whole. That was the ending to everything that Marvel put together for 10 years. Um yeah, yeah. That was that's oh, did you say no way home? I did. <laughs> You don't know yet. You've already seen it. It's already that good. It's dope. <laughs> I know a man who knows a man who knows a man, and it's dope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, that's a little time for me. <laughs> I'm just letting y'all know. You, if when No Way Home comes out, go watch it and then come back and tell me it's not dope. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. <sighs> I don't trust it. We'll talk about that later, but I don't I don't trust the trailer. Um, All right. That, yeah, you ain't seen it. Tra- All right. You need to watch. The, um, just the trailer is better than it. Just the trailer made your top five. Is that, That's what it is. The trailer is so good. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. And I've seen No Way Home. And it's amazing. Hey, were well, you over there with him? You close, you close enough to sneak in. All right, fine, fine. Right. I, okay. What I really meant to say was... Um, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. That's what I really meant to say, but No Way Home just came out. All right. Marvin is on our live stream. He said, I should have said The Edge um, because he was watching. I should have said it. Uh, He also said, I should have said Pinpoint, which I'm assuming he wants me just to talk about his books all the time. 
I'm done Sean, with who's also still on this live stream, said I should have said Belial. All and great why, books. This and is why he left that, that spot open because because then you could fill it in with your own book. Thank you. And it, and I'm on the show, so of course, if uh, you want to say Ace Blade, Blade, Jacks weren't you know, going to be on there. See, this guy, <laughs> this guy right here, this guy, ridiculous. Uh, that's right. Well, okay. He says pinpoint is from Page, uh, which I know that's, but that's still second sight. You guys are all second sight, it's so it's the same. It's the same yeah, thing. It's all. It's all same. It's all. It's all, it's all, same. all. All y'all making the same money. It's <laughs> <laughs> Hand over fist. All right. Yeah. Right. All right, so that was Danny's Quick Takes. That was brought to you by Second Sight Publishing, since we've mentioned them a couple times on the show now. Marvin, if you're just catching up, go back. Um, once the live stream is over, rewatch this. We actually talked about Second Sight's uh, advertisement at the Venom series, so we shared that. Um, so please go back and watch that. But now we're going to do Kyron's Quick Take, where I give Danny some questions. Yeah, oh, yeah, I told you I had something for you. Changing it up. I okay. had something for you. And we're going to see, Danny, if you have the glow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was cheesy, but I like it. All I right. love it. I liked it a lot. All right. 45 seconds. Uh, hold on. Okay. You have 45 seconds. I give you five questions. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. So you haven't answered the, ask the question yet. You can't start it. <laughs> Look, I've never done this before. All right. Thanks. I've never done this before, right? <laughs> Thanks, done this before where I talk and do the and do the, the camera and everything. This is all right. We are both football fans. Um, yes. and my understanding is that you are a Carolina Panthers fan for some reason. Yes, I am. I know the Panthers have been around for a very short amount of time compared to the rest of the great teams like the 49ers and the 49ers. But in that small, minuscule, minute amount of time, who is your all-time favorite Carolina Panther? Ooh. That's not fair. Um, oh, but talking about my all-time favorite Marvel or superhero movies, what? <laughs> um, I would have to say... Ah, it's either going to be Steve Smith or Julius Peppers. It's got to be one of those two guys. Wow. Um, Here, I thought you were going to say Cam Newton, too. I like Cam, but no. Uh, <laughs> like Gary um, Collins? <laughs> I'm going to say I'm gonna say Steve Smith. Steve Smith, okay. you know, um, he, he should have played his whole career with the, with the Panthers. But, mm -hmm. you know, he went up to the Ravens and showed them that he still had something left. He came back and scorched us. Um, when mm -hmm. he played Memphis, and I just like his his attitude and, and his fire for the game. Wow, Cam did not dive on the on that fumble. Marvin. We're not going to talk about that. They <laughs> wanted they wanted Peyton Manning to win that Super Bowl, and you will not be able to convince me otherwise. But what, Cam he, Newton wanted Peyton Manning to win that. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> somebody somebody got paid because uh, not Cam Newton. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't want right. to talk about it. All right. Yeah, I still never understood why they brought you guys into the NFC West. I'm like, y'all on the other side of the country. I, even the Saints made no sense to me, but whatever. The South, NFC South. Yeah, yeah. Now, but when you first came in, you were the oh, you yeah, were part yeah, of yeah. NFC West. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we had we had the Rams, <laughs> us, the Saints. They were like, hey man, they were like, hey, let's just put them somewhere. Why not? <laughs> I was like, we have no other team in the NFC West that's on the West Coast. <laughs> hey. All right, question two. Purple is your favorite cover, as we all know, if you've watched this show. If Ace Blade wasn't purple, what color would he be? Ooh. Mm. I can't even imagine Ace Blade in any other color. Um, high yellow. <laughs> high, high yellow. Fluorescent beige. No, he would be orange. Ace Blade actually has a, a bulletproof costume that is purple oh. and orange. That's... Uh, orange and purple so uh later on in the novel like chapter 15 or 16 he develops uh some local students develop a uh a serum to soak his you remember blank man you seen blank yeah, man yeah. yeah yeah so yeah, I, stole I, that idea. I stole that idea and he uh <laughs> he has a bulletproof suit just similar to that and uh it's orange so it would be orange it'll be orange okay all right all right orange ace blade that seems weird, 
But I'm yeah. down for that. But the whole idea is to to make it bright. You know how people talk about uh, Robin. Robin mm. is all bright so that he can get all the bullets. Uh, or the Batman's insignia. Form. Or they yeah, say right. it's yellow because you can shoot at it. It yeah. still makes no sense, but whatever. So that's that's the point. And then a bright city like Vegas, you got to have a bright hero. So purple okay. and orange. All right. All right. Question three. Get ready for this one. Mm-mm. If money was no object, what comic would you own? What comic would I own? Gosh. You there's this uh mm. there's this comic called Saw that I like a lot. And I recently, <laughs> I recently heard that the that the owner hates it. Uh 30 so I seconds. Like, <laughs> I would probably buy that. Oh, <laughs> um, now, I don't mean like you own the property, but you just own the actual comic. Oh, the so, actual comic. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Money was no object. Oh. What individual comic would you buy? Maybe, uh, I don't know, Superman. Uh, Saw the Lightning World number one? Okay, yeah. I got that already. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one. That's a really tough one. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Five. Probably oh. uh, Black Panther. No. Three. I don't know. Dude. I don't know. So, <laughs> I have no clue. That's I, I can't answer that. That's that's a tough right. one right there. All right, all right. I have no clue. All right. God. See, see, don't be talking about me saying I can't come up with a fifth one. You can even come up with one. That's you could have said though. Adventure that's... Comics one. You could have said um, I know. That's that's amazing. Sp- I didn't want to say like something like that. Maybe I would have got I don't know, man. That's a tough one. That's a tough one right there. That's why I should be doing quick takes. <laughs> I asked you the can, hard you things questions. It. You can take it over for now. Uh, <laughs> All right. All right. So you failed on that one. So let's go to four. I'm it's be a hard about hitting that one. For the rest of the day. <laughs> and if you are watching the live stream and you happen to have a comic that you want to say you would buy, please feel free to put in the comics. Uh, but question four If you could interview one person, anyone in the world, for our show, it doesn't have to be comic related. Who would it be and why? It would be um, interview one person in the world. Anybody. It would probably be Will Smith, maybe? I think it would be Will okay. Smith. All right. I like I like to listen to Will Smith talk, and he has a lot of knowledge. And, um, you know, he has a lot of, uh, of, of good, wise things to say to people. And uh, I think he answers questions as honestly as he can now. So I think it'd be Will Smith. I like that answer, actually. That's a, that would incorporate really well into the show, considering his sci-fi background, mm-hmm. his TV background. That, that would actually be a good show. All right. All I would right. ask him why he hates Wild Wild West so much, because I like that movie a lot. Do you really like that movie, or you just like the soundtrack? I like, well, I yeah. like the movie, too. The movie was entertaining. It was fun. Okay. I understand it broke his his streak of number ones, but you know, mm-hmm. eventually it had to be broken. Sure, but it's still he, bad. You know, and he uh, didn't do the Matrix because of that movie. Yeah, but so I understand it might be you know have some traumatic memories attached to it. But okay. I enjoyed it. I liked the movie. All right, uh, going back to our combo question, Marvin says Hulk one eighty one, which is the first appearance of Wolverine, which is this is the second mention of Wolverine on this show. So again, Marvin, if you didn't already, go back and listen to the beginning where I talked about how much I hate Wolverine. Uh, Marvin said he should have done the Matrix. And yes, in hindsight, we all understand he should have done the Matrix instead of Wild Wild West. I think everybody agrees on that. That's pretty universal. I think it would have been a terrible movie. You don't want to see Will Smith going, whoa. I don't want to see Will Smith doing karate ever in anything. Um <laughs> They did. They did good with. I didn't think I would want to see uh, what's Keanu. his name, Keanu, doing it, but he's been doing it ever since, and he's been killing it. But okay, I don't know. I don't know about that. All right, last question. This is my favorite one. You recently did pretty good on your last Kickstarter, and one of the ways that you went to advertise and get. Uh, views and people to look at your Kickstarter was to say that you would do workouts depending on if people shared or backed or what have you. You it would do terrible. a certain workout. You would ride your bike. You would do push-ups. You did burpees. Out of everything you did for that Kickstarter, 
What was your least favorite workout during that campaign? Burpees. That's easy. <laughs> Burpees are the are the devil. Burpees right. are the worst and best workout that a person I think can do. And I honestly will never probably never do another one. I did <laughs> I probably did 200 burpees during the Kickstarter campaign. Damn. And it was terrible. It was just terrible. It, did, it it made me not want to do anything for the rest of the day when I was doing them. It was bad. I enjoy okay. riding my bike. I like push-ups. I can do push-ups. I I will never do another burpee again if I if I don't have to. But how much did you lose during that campaign? Like I weight lost twenty five pounds. So it was worth it then. Pounds. It was worth it. And then as soon as the as soon as the campaign was over, <laughs> I said, "Forget this. <laughs> I'm going to Pizza Hut." <laughs> as soon as it was over uh, uh it was a wrap for me okay mm. all right <laughs> have you gained all of it back just about i'm working on it i'm working all on right. getting those last i'm working on getting those last seven pounds back <laughs> it's starting to become winter season you got to gain all that back to in- <laughs> insulate yourself <laughs> exactly got to Oh, oh man. All right. So that was Kyron's quick states, which is a lot better than Danny's. Yeah, um, like and that was brought to you by uh again, Second Sight Publishing, just because we like mentioning them on our show for some reason. And Wolverine. And Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> and Spider Man Spider Man No Way Home. <laughs> Out soon. <laughs> but if you know if you know my friend who knows a guy who knows a guy, you've already seen it like I have. You've already so. seen it. You've already seen it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, this has been fun. Is there anything you want to talk about before we let everybody go? Um, no, nah, man. Just read more comics, people. Get out there and read some read some comics. Yeah. I was gonna ask you, do you <clears throat> before we leave, I want to okay. hear your thoughts on this. All right. You've been making comics for a long time. Yeah. And seven years, yes. Seven years now. Do you prefer people to What's more important, buying comics or reading comics? I know you can't read comics without buying comics, but if you could only... You can borrow from your friend. You could borrow from a friend, right. All right. So if you could have people buy your comics, which is going to financially support you yeah. and continue you know, letting you make comics, but nobody read them. you know, People just bought them to collect them, maybe. Okay. Or you had the option to not make money on your comics, but everybody reads them and adores them and, you know, mm-hmm. is impacted by them. Which one is more important? The business side of me says, buy my shit. <laughs> like, please buy my stuff. I have, I have bills to pay. I have artists to pay. Mm-hmm. I have printers to pay. I have website hosters to pay. Um, so buy my stuff. But as the creator, I want you to read and enjoy my book. Um if you're not reading my work, there's no reason for me to be making comics because my comics are there for you to enjoy and for you to, to read. So if you're not reading it, I don't want to be making it. So I'm going to say reading. Yeah. That's my final answer. I think if, I think if I could break even with all of my books and people actually read them, I would, I would make my, make comics for the rest of my life and be happy with that. But of course, I would like to quit my job also. That, but. That's, I'm getting to the point where I want to be able to tell my wife one day that she can quit her job. That's my goal. Right. It, it, so I can come home and be like, hey, babe, go quit your job if you want to. Yeah. And then she's like, okay. That's that's the point where I wanted to be. Like, I, I know, okay, I can't say it too much, but a friend of mine just got his comic optioned um, by uh, FX. Okay. He's already gotten royalty. Like they've already done a, a, um, initial sketches, things like that, because it's going to be and it turned into a, car, a cartoon series for FX, oh, wow. like Archer. Nice. So they already did like initial character designs, things like that. And I want to get to the point where my stuff is there and people are able to enjoy it in different mediums like that. And where I'm getting to that point where I can say, "Hey, babe, bam! Everything we've worked hard for, everything we sacrificed, it's now." It's now coming to fruition, so that's where I'm. Right. I'm wanting to get. So yeah, read read my stuff, please, please go to tourscomics.com, buy my books, read them, 
enjoy them, share it with your friends after you bought it. I have no problem with do that. But yeah, yeah, that's it. And so I was just gonna ask you where people can find your stuff, tourscomics.com. And uh, when is when is Starcore coming out? When are we gonna be able to get that? All right, so Marcos Martinez, who's the artist on it, he is working on the cover right now. We're going to do a launch for the Kickstarter at the end of this month, more than likely. I've already started putting together the Kickstarter page. Okay. So, yeah, end of this month, early November, StarCore. And um, this is going to be different than other books in the way that the artwork is more cartoony. Um, okay. And, and I, I mentioned this on uh, Chuck Pino's podcast last week that this the series is aimed to become a a cartoon series, a Saturday morning cartoon series. Mm -hmm. So the look is going to, the look and feel of it is going to be like a cartoon series. And then, and again, this is an homage to everything I grew up on all the Saturday morning cartoons, uh, combo characters like dark Hawk and things like that. This is a, a direct homage to that, which I love and grew up on everything I've done before that was Shaman's destiny and saw and Ruby from planet Oz, which if you are a fan of Ruby from planet Oz, I am going to come back to that soon, but just, I actually got commissions, so that took up my time for other things. But um, this is my homage to everything I grew up in and loved. So hopefully you guys dig it. Nice. What about you, man? Where can we find your your books, your things, your social media, all that? Anybody looking for me can um can can just look up the Ace Blade on social media at the Ace Blade, and you'll find me on uh, Instagram, TikTok. Twitter and Facebook. Okay. All right. And if you, if this is your first time checking out the four tales podcast, feel free to go back to our website, four tales and check out some of our past episodes. We have interviews with Dan Fraga. Uh, Marvin Wynn's been on there. Uh, Greg Mokeen. Uh, we have a bunch of other people. We have more guests lined up. Actually, did you want to talk about the guests we have in two weeks? Since you and him have a connection, oh yeah, um, a my kingly main man connection. Wally yeah, yeah, my man Wally McNair is coming on the show. Um, All right. We're going to talk about King Supreme, and we're going to talk about um, how he has all the swag, and I, and and I have none of it. And we're going to talk about art versus writing again. And I'm um, hopefully uh, he and Kyron won't uh, won't be too one sided on me. So he has all the swag, so this is just going to be just like Monzo Star all over again. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, That's just how it happens. All right. That was, that was a good episode with Lonzo, so I, I, I'm okay it with was, that. Was. But, but definitely come back in two weeks. Check that out. Uh, but in the meantime, we want to say sayonara, goodbye, and please take care of yourselves. Trying to say,